so glad you joined us today for this month's webinar, Navigating the Open Seas with JAWS and Fusion 2023. So today's webinar is going to last about an hour, and there's several points during our training uh, where we're going to give you guys a, a chance to ask questions or comment, uh, but just some just some housekeeping to begin with here, so all of this can be as smooth as possible. We have a number of attendees this month, so everybody's going to be uh, everybody's going to be muted until the question and answer sections. If you have a question or comment, please raise your virtual hand at any time. To raise your hand, if you're using Zoom on a PC, press Alt-Y. Uh, you can press Alt-Y when you're actually, you have to be in the Zoom window to press Alt-Y and raise your hand. So lower your hand when you're finished, just press uh, Alt-Y again. And if you've dialed in by phone, uh, press star nine to raise your hand and star, star nine to lower your hand. So this will make it easy for our moderator to, to see you and see that you have a question and be able to call on you. The, uh, so what's going to happen then is that moderator will give you permission to talk, uh, just so everybody's not talking over each other. But then you're also going to have to unmute yourself before speaking, too. So we've kind of run into that before and just want to give you a heads up on that. So our moderator today is our fabulous Elena. She does amazing things behind the scenes for our whole department and our, our webinars for sure. So this webinar is brought to you by the Lighthouse for the Blind Incorporated. Please silence your cell phones because that was mine. This webinar is br brought to you by the Lighthouse for the Blind Incorporated. Our, our organization is headquartered in Seattle. Uh, and we have manufacturing facilities in Seattle, Washington, Spokane, Washington, Somerville, South Carolina. And we also have business and serv uh, service business and base supply center retail locations uh, in a number of other locations around the country. So our mission is to empower people who are blind, deaf, blind, and blind with other disabilities by sus creating diverse, sustainable and meaningful employment opportunities. So we're currently hiring two. So scope out some of our open positions at lhblind.org slash jobs. So the webinar today is one of several new exciting things uh, that we're doing as part of some new community-based uh, programs and services. And we're gonna be launching all these community-based programs and services over the next few years. So stay tuned for more and feel free to reach out to us during the webinar or, or after. You've definitely received emails from me uh, and you'll be receiving an email afterwards too uh, with, with an invite to the survey also. Uh, so, so also please share any of this info to, to people you think might benefit. So I'm Tim Paulding and I manage our computer training programs and our Braille literacy program uh, and I'm out of our Spokane location, and I manage those programs across our organization. And I've been in the blindness rehabilitation field for just about 15 years, a little more now, and 10 of those have been at the Lighthouse. I've taught both assistive technology and orientation and mobility for, for most of that time, and I also happen to be blind. And I'll pass it over to Everett for his intro. All right. Am I hearable? Yes. Okay. My name's Everett Elam. I uh, am the computer and assistive technology instructor. I'm one of three. We're very busy here. So I'm one of three and I work out of, out of Spokane, one of three um, tech instructors at the, uh, at the Lighthouse. Um, we have one in Spokane and one in Seattle, and I, I teach from Spokane. Um, and come to think of it, I think we actually have a few more. So uh, I have been in the blindness re rehabilitation field for about eight years now. I've done accessibility testing for Sony. Um, just recently uh, did my internship for Cadis in St. Louis and got that taken care of. And I am super excited to be here and, and learn from uh, Ron Miller here. Um, we have an exciting lineup of future webinars. These are monthly webinars. So in April, we'll actually be doing audio description. So make sure you check in for that. And if you're registered, you'll you'll get sent the uh, correct information for that. 
So I'll pass it on to Ron for his introduction. Okay. Well, hi, everybody. Uh, I just what? pressed the space to, am I here? You're yes, here. You okay, are, good. Sir. You scared me. Yeah. I did. Uh, <laughs> I pressed the space to unmute and my display didn't show me that it had unmuted. And then uh, it sounded like you guys weren't hearing me. So I thought, oh, no. So my name is Ron Miller, and I am the Blindness Technology Training Specialist with Vispero. I'm part of the training department, and um, I get I get a specialist title. I'm a specialist, but I have to say that I am not, not by far the smartest kid in the room. Um, <laughs> we have some great folks in our training department, uh, Elizabeth Whitaker, Rachel Buchanan, um, just neat people. Uh, I've been around, <clears throat> excuse me, I've been around uh, in the blindness industry for about, oh man, 23 years in May. That's just as scary. <laughs> um, it doesn't seem that long ago, but I've, I've been with Vispero since 2000, May of 2000, and uh, still there. Uh, the Caddis thing is interesting. I'm a retread because I've gone back. I'm going through the UMass Boston Caddis program. I'm just starting my practicum. <laughs> so... Uh, I'm impressed you made it through. I'm I'm sweating it working full time, and then I I can't apply my hours to my practicum, so I'm trying to trying to squeeze it in. And um, it is neat to be on this podcast, a new podcast. Uh, I'm gonna have to keep track of what you guys are doing and pop in when I can and and give it a listen. Yes. Uh, oh, absolutely. Awesome. And uh, I've had the privilege of visiting the lighthouse in Seattle and have not been to the one in Spokane. So maybe one of these days uh, I can get out that way. And uh, I'm very, very glad to be here. So our objectives for this webinar, uh, we have a few and I will quickly go over them. So the first one is that use our listeners slash viewers will come away with JAWS 2023 changes and additions which they can apply. So you can use these to figure out uh, what might or might not be working and why it's not working. Um, or you can use new new changes that uh, Ron's gonna tell us about today. You're gonna be pro provided, this is the second objective, you're gonna be provided with information on research, uh, resources such as, S as FSCast and FS Open Line. Uh, you can, do any any of your smart devices or Siri, you could say play um, FS cast podcast. Uh, just just go ahead and and binge that after you're through here because there is some amazing information um, on that. So and I'm sure we could we can circle back and talk a little bit about that. But that's Freedom Scientific's flagship podcast and I enjoy it. Uh, gain valuable insight through live demonstrations of JAWS and fusion tasks and features. And that is the final objective. So Excellent. without further ado, uh, we're going to get into the first part of the webinar, the JAWS part. And Ron has some uh, features that he wants to talk about. So I'll turn it back over to you. Okay, off we go. Off now, we go. <laughs> That's right. Um, this is JAWS, so it's speech only, but I will ask you, do you want me to go ahead and share my screen? So uh, for those of you who can see, you can, uh, there's not a whole lot to see, but I'm happy to to share my screen and, and do this. Yeah, and, go ahead and, and okay. take over. Uh, well, such as it is anyway. Such as it is. That's right. Oh, it belonged at me. Didn't want to let me share my screen. What is the deal? Here we go. Hang on. Uh, so... Okay, we got your screen. Oh, you do have it. Good. We do. Bueno. By the way, um, yeah, I, I always thought it would be cool to, I, I digress, to be a, a, a fully blind, a totally blind O&M instructor. Um, I like the perspective a lot. It's very, very cool. So let me turn speech on here. <laughs> I love this. Let me turn speech on here, I say, uh, and I'll do and, it again. Uh, we're not hearing speech quite yet. No, so I'm not either. So that's that's the joy of the moment. Okay. Speech either. Um, I'm actually juggling a couple of Braille displays here. So let's, let's see what's going on. Full speech. <laughs> there it is. All right. So we've got speech on. And the first thing I want to talk about, now that I actually have speech speaking, um, 
is a, a, a thing that I use quite a bit. And, um, and my notes have just taken off without me, but that's okay. It's, um, let me get back down to it. Isn't this fun? Your, your I think next... it was the smart glance, maybe? Nope, that's in your, that's in your list of questions on things to touch. So we okay. are going to talk about smart glass, glance. And you've got a, a few things that I didn't put up in this segment because you want to get around to them. But here we go. Finally, finally, finally. So the first one is the notifications history. And I, I, I know what it is, and I, can, I use it all the time, but I wanted to read the official name so I didn't mess anybody up. Um, because I find this really useful. Uh, I, I use, obviously, JAWS daily, and I have Outlook open all the time. I have other apps open all the time. I have Microsoft Teams going all the time. And all of them want to tell me things. All of them have announcements. All of them tell me who said something, who's calling me, what I need to do to answer a call. If I've just gotten a new message, what's collapsed in my inbox or not collapsed because I show everything in groups. I, there's just a flood uh, of stuff that's, that's constantly talking. And I don't necessarily remember them all as they all go flooding past. So we've now got the notification history feature. And that's cool because it lets you review all of the notifications that you receive for the day in Windows, um, for Windows and other applications. It also gives you a lot of control of which notifications you hear, uh, whether they're displayed in Braille or not. It, it's, it's handy. Um, so you can make it play a sound for a specific notification. You can, if you've got repetitive notifications, for me, that's uh, uh, um, collapsed, expanded, collapsed, expanded in Outlook. Uh, I can make that stop being announced, you know, those kinds of things. So let me look at this and I'll tell you. Now, I'm not going to do this, but you can use voice assistant to open this as well. You can say the wake up words. And then uh, you can say notification history. And it will also do this if you don't want to do um, the commands. So the commands are, we're going to do a, uh, a layered command. You do insert space. Space. Jaw says space. You hear the little pop pip noise. And we're going to press N, like notification. Notification history. Recent notifications list box. You are muted. Press Alt plus A to unmute your microphone or <laughs> press and hold the space key to temporarily unmute. Zoom 618 p.m. 1 of 55. Wow. So, yeah. And that's that, of course, is the Zoom, of course, telling me I'm muted. And if I arrow through here. Um, the host started this webinar. Zoom 618 p.m. Audio now muted. Zoom 6 eight. Okay, and I could roll down through here. You'd hear that. You'd hear now. I, I I I shut Jaws down and restarted it. As you can tell, there's only 55 messages, and I guarantee you, from when I started work a little after six, uh, my time in the morning, to now, there's been a whole lot more than 55 messages spoken, right? But um, <laughs> you know, if if you were to leave Jaws running, in fact, if you don't shut your computer down, and some people don't, some people say. It's harder on the PC to start up and shut down and start up and shut down. JAWS will actually keep a running list of the, uh, of the, the notifications spoken in the last 24 hours. Okay. Um, first in, first out. So if you have, you know, if the clock goes round, it, it keeps replacing those things. It, it uh, you know, the ones that came in in the morning may not necessarily be there tomorrow, let's say. So, Anyway, and you can use the arrow key to move down these. You notice the newest ones are on top. The oldest ones start to happen as you go down. It progresses through. Okay, and this works if you're running JAWS or if you're running Fusion. And if there's, you know, if, if folks aren't familiar with Fusion, Fusion is, like it sounds, a fusion of bringing JAWS and Zoom Text, our screen magnification program, together and making them work together. So it works in both of those settings with just JAWS by itself or with Fusion running. So if I press the applications key. Applications. Don't show in history dot dot dot. Two of two. Oh, I, nice. I can tell it never show me whether I'm muted again. Like you're currently muted. You're currently unmuted. So I can, I can press enter here and dot 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 means I can massage this and set up some rules about how not to show it in history and some other things. Create rule dot dot dot. One of two. C. Thank you. And I can create a rule. And the rules get very specific. Um, 
I don't think I'll take the time to, to run us through this now. Um, we can circle back around to that if you guys want. Um, but it, it lets me create a rule about this notification. I can customize it, how it's spoken, uh, whether it's shown in Braille or not. Uh, if I don't want to see that notification at all, if, if I, I want to hear it, right? I, I need it to be spoken and shown in Braille, but maybe I don't want it to show up in the history anymore. That's why you heard it say, don't show this again. So if I, if I, let me, let me press escape. Escape. Leaving menus, recent notifications list box, audio now muted, zoom six. Eight. If I press enter on this, I just, I tapped control to stop it speaking. I'll press enter here. Enter, leaving table. Notification details dialogue, notification text, notification text, notification text, read only edit, audio now muted. N. Okay, I can tab. App, read only edit, zoom. A. So it reads the message after saying notification text too, too many times. So I'm going to report that. <laughs> it's a bug and see if they can't stop it from repeating, repeating, repeating itself. But it tells you what app that the notification was generated by. Time, read only edit, 3 slash 22 slash 2023, 6 hours, 18 minutes, and 9 seconds p.m. T. So you get a date time hack. Close button. And I can close it. I'll press space here. Space. Notification history. Recent. And we're back in the list. I'm going to tap control to mute that. So you can see additional details. If you say, where did that come from? You know, you're reading through here and you just don't recognize it. Um, you get that. You get the full text. Now, what's nice is if you do control A in that read only edit field that shows you the text or any of those, you can grab those, copy them and paste them somewhere else if you've got to maybe report this, discuss this, or figure out what it is you want to do with it later. And then you can delete all of the notifications from this history by pressing tab. I shouldn't have closed it down, right? Um, let's see, bear with me a sec here, and I'll get us back in there. Okay, so I can press tab. Enable rules checked box checked. I, got, e. I, could, I could disable all the rules that I set, and make it look like I had never modified this. Create rule dot 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 button. Okay. C. We've seen that in our uh, applications menu as well. I'm tabbing through this. Manage rules dot 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 button. M. Now that's kind of cool because you can change the rules around. You can do some things with them, not just, just delete them. Clear history button. L. And here's where I was headed, the clear history button. I can press space here. Space. Confirm clear history dialog. Are you sure you want to delete all notifications in the history? No button. Alt plus N. Now, it assumes I did this by mistake, and I don't really want to throw all these away, but I can. Yes button. Alt plus Y. And space. Space. Notification history. Clear history button. L. Okay, I've done that. Let's tab. Enable rules checked box checked. Tab. Create rule dot dot. Manage rules dot dot. Close button. Enable rules checked box. And now there's nothing there. There's no list anymore. So I can... I could shift tab back to close, but let's just press escape. Escape. What's new in Fusion 2023 magnification and screen reading? So okay. And we're on a web page, the what's new in Fusion. So as you see, you can, you can do a lot of really cool stuff with this. You can manage your notifications. You can make them not be spoken. You can make them still be spoken and brailled, but not show up in history. A lot of stuff you can do with this. It's a really flexible, flexible thing. Um, I, I use it. To look at stuff, I use it to make annoying, rep repetitive <laughs> um, announcements disappear because I don't want to hear them again. So that's one I thought was very cool. I think is very cool, and it's the notification history. Yeah, I can't absolutely. speak for everyone here, but this webinar is already worth its weight in gold because that's that's so dynamic. You, that's mm -hmm. very very powerful. Yep. And if you've got stuff that you just want to go shut up, I know yeah. We, I tell my little boy we don't say shut up, but. <laughs> uh, there were time. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty neat. Awesome. So the other thing we're going to look at, and we're doing this in a couple of little pieces, what do we do? What do we do if JAWS gets stuck? And it, it doesn't happen as much anymore, at least not to me. Um, I remember there were times when uh, one of those um, the early toast messages would pop or those balloons would show up and it would just it messed up focus and jaws would just stop talking it was still there you could see it on the display you know whatever the last thing it said was um like now i've got a clock running and i'll see that on my braille display that's another feature by the way which i didn't actually have on my list because it's really hard to show braille this way <laughs> yeah but you can set jaws up to show time 
uh, where your status cells normally are if you have a braille display that uh, whose driver supports status cells and that's really cool you can you can i know i digress you could do it in two ways you can have it show the time uh, in hours and minutes or you could have it show minutes and seconds so when we do webinars like this i have mine showing minutes and seconds so i can watch our time go by and uh, i see you know we're 21 past and three seconds four seconds um, or I can show it, I like 24 hour time. So over here on the East Coast, it's 1921 hours, 721. Um, but I, again, that's a digression. I can't really show you that per se, but I want you to know that can be done. But if JAWS suddenly just wax out, it's still up, it's still running, but it's not talking anymore, you may want to make it, you may want to, you may want to reset it. And the only way to do it is to shut it down and bring it back up. So to manually shut JAWS down when this issue occurs, there's a couple of ways to do it. You can press Windows and insert plus F4. And that'll shut it down. But it will also do a memory dump that our tech support guys can go back and grab in case there's a problem that's occurring, it's a JAWS bug or something, they'll have a memory dump. If you don't want to do that, you don't want to do a memory dump, and I'm not going to demo this one, but you press insert space, remember that's our layered command, and then you press F4, and that'll make JAWS shut down, restart, and not perform a memory dump. Okay, shut down, restart, and not perform a memory dump. Um, what do we do if my computer starts up and I have Braille, and no sound. Or if you don't have Braille, you just have no sound. Sometimes your sound card will be muted. Maybe somebody you share a computer with said, I don't want to hear this, and they mute your sound card. Um, I used to have a Dell work computer, a laptop, that would mute my sound card all by itself. Uh, a command that a lot of people know is the insert shift, sorry, the insert escape command. I'm looking ahead at my notes. The insert escape command. And insert escape it, it refreshes the screen. It makes JAWS go back and look at the screen and make sure it's, it's, it knows what it's looking back uh, looking at. But now, Insert Escape also makes JAWS real quickly look at the, your sound card settings. And if your sound card is muted, so 0% sound level, it will return your sound level, your audio level, up to 50%. So you can hear your JAWS speech. Um, I've used that a few times. I've talked to others who have used it a few times. So if you fire up your computer and you're like, oh, JAWS starts at the log on screen and all that, um, if you don't have speech and you, you think JAWS might be running, insert plus escape. And if your sound card's muted, it'll bring it back up. So, so that's that just is, the, the old school uh, screen refresh command now does that? Yes, that's the old school screen refresh command. And ah. now it peeks at your sound card and goes, oh, wait, you're muted. And Which it, makes it a lot of sense because it's a screen reader. So why not refresh the part that we are <laughs> we using? actually Hello, use? <laughs> refresh it. That's genius. Yes. Yeah, it's 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 a small thing, but I wanted to talk about it because if it happens to you, it's not a small thing, right? It's it's a big deal, a very big deal. As a trainer, I can say that's not a small thing because the gray hairs from people having muted jaws, they're <laughs> coming funny. in hard. <laughs> yes. Well, especially if you're doing remote training. Yes. Right? Yes, yes, yes. And I want to give us one more of these, and then we'll move on to Fusion. Um, on a lot of websites, and my, my example is YouTube, um, they have their own hotkeys. YouTube has it, of course, all of the Google workspace. Um, and you've normally, you've got to turn off virtual PC cursor, okay? And that's, it makes JAWS read things differently, especially, um, uh, you know, the, the, the Google Drive stuff kind of handles itself. They've set up that backend system to be very navigable using their hotkeys. I find YouTube and other places like that aren't quite as friendly. Um, they're harder to read around if I turn off the virtual PC cursor, but I might want to use their hotkeys like K to play and pause. You know, I mean, it just is easier than pressing B, 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 B to get to the buttons. Okay, so now in our latest build of JAWS, if you press insert shift, okay, insert plus shift plus Z like Zulu, it temporarily suspends the quick navigation keys and does not, does not, turn off the virtual cursor. So it lets you be able to read around using the virtual PC cursor, 
but all the quick nav keys are off. So if you're on YouTube, again, you can press K to start and stop. And that's the only key I <laughs> it's the only key I use on YouTube. But it's an important one when I'm trying to stop audio for a minute. I'm taking notes on a, a tutorial, um, which I don't know if you had to do it for your cat. As I do. You know, there's there's things they want you to watch, and I'm trying to frantically, you know, braille in notes or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, K, start, stop, start, stop. Right. Um, and it, it lets you do that. So insert... Uh, insert shift Z Zulu to take that. Okay. So hey, you are in chat from, BT. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Question from Tim here. How long does that last? You said it, it temporarily suspends. Ah, very good. It will stay on until you navigate away from that screen. So um, when I'm taking notes, I'm usually taking notes uh, on another device as I'm doing this. Uh, and it, it will let me do this. It, it's perfectly happy. Uh, but once you move away and back in, then it shuts it. It doesn't shut it down. Sorry. It, it discontinues it, right? And if you alt to... tab to a different app or something. Right. Okay, exactly. Got it. Right. Got it. Exactly. Yeah. So if you navigate away um, from the current page for whatever reason and come back. Good question. I appreciate that. I, it's in my notes. And I, I, I told you when I get into my notes and I start getting excited about stuff, I jump past stuff. <laughs> awesome. Oh, wow, it's good. It's great. So turning to Fusion, one of the neat things that's there, if you're a, a magnification user, is a feature called True Center Tracking. And it's, it's a brand new way for uh, Zoom Text, or if you're using Fusion, to, to handle alignment and, and tracking when you're looking at a screen. Okay, so as you're moving your mouse around, um, you type in text, you navigate menus, uh, this stuff happens. Uh, Zoom text is pretty good about keeping things centered automatically. It, it scrolls to keep um, the focus in view, your, your mouse, your, your uh, PC cursor. It keeps them in view, which is known as tracking. And alignment controls how the scroll uh, keeps tracked images or tracked items in view. So it, it tries to hold them in the center. And in Earlier Zoom text version, Zoom text versions and infusion, um, it there was only one track, you know, track center option. And as you moved around the window, how do I describe this? Um, it would center your magnification view, but as you scrolled left or scrolled right, let's say you're approaching the edge of the screen, uh, let's say the mouse pointer starts to come off center and you're moving toward the edge, um, the option still tracks but it kind of slides your view over <laughs> toward the edge of the screen with the new uh the, the true center it holds your um it holds your stuff in your 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 centered item in the center now we've got a better description of this than i can offer give me just a moment here screen sharing i'm not going to stop it from being quiet for a minute I'm going to mute speech for a sec just so we don't have speech. And we are seeing your questions in the chat, and Elena will get to those when we play air quotes in the Q&A. So thank you for your patience. Just keep on writing those in the chat. Yeah, lots of good information here. Um... I'm taking notes. Hopefully some of you guys are too. This is this is great. Did we lose Ron? Ron, uh, it looks like you are muted. Hello, hello. Am I back? Uh, You're yes, back. We can hear you now. Oh, good. And my, my Braille response is still really slow. All right, let's go. Um, yeah, this is really good. It's much more concisely spoken than I can do. So let's move to that. Go back over. And do you have the um, the web page on screen? Uh, yes, we can see the page. I'm going to kick this off then. Here we go. Freedom Scientific, a Vespero brand. We're excited to announce a new feature in Zoom Text and Fusion called True Center Tracking. In earlier versions of Zoom Text or Fusion, center tracking allowed users to keep their mouse cursor in the center of the screen while navigating in a magnified view. However, when the user tried to navigate to the edges of the screen, the cursor would move from the center of the screen to reach links and items in far corners. 
users who prefer a fixed cursor location may have wanted to be able to control this aspect of center tracking, and now they can. With true center tracking, the mouse cursors always stay in the center of the screen. If the user now moves to the far edges of the desktop, the boundaries will move to ensure that the cursor stays in the middle. To enable true center tracking, open the Magnifier tab, go to Navigation Settings, then click on Alignment in the pull-down menu. Under Mouse Pointer Alignment, you can select the option Centered within the Zoom window to turn on traditional center tracking. At the bottom of the window, under Center Alignment Options, select Enable True Center Tracking. From here, you can see that the edges of the desktop move to accommodate your center-aligned mouse cursor. You're also able to change the background color to provide additional contrast between the desktop and the boundary. True Center Tracking also works for text cursor and menu item alignment. By utilizing True Center Tracking in this way, users can optimize their Zoom text and Fusion experience to fit their exact needs. True Center Tracking, available on Zoom Text and Fusion. See, I told you it was much more concisely said. <laughs> so that is True Center Tracking. Okay. No, that makes sense. Totally. Yeah, That's much great. more than me, with me trying to... Uh, for me to try. And say, <laughs> I was going to ask you why your voice got higher there for a minute. But... That's right. And the, and the groovy music came in the background. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, we don't say groovy anymore, right? <laughs> oh, I do. Oh, good. <laughs> Just me then. Eh? Very cool. So, yeah, that is, it's new. It's, I think it's neat. Um, groovy. You know, uh, just, I don't know. I don't, obviously, I, I, don't, I don't use it, but um, it is one that would be, I think, worth having. Just a note, and I believe it mentioned it, True Center Tracking is off by default, so you need to follow those steps to, uh, to actually do that. Now, if you're asking, okay, I just heard that video and I didn't take notes, and that's okay. Um, all you have to do is go to our webpage, and there is a, if you arrow down, you'll see software. What's that webpage? www.freedomscientific.com. Excellent. You can go you can go right in there and it will uh, you can go to the zoom text and uh, under what's new there's a link to that video that's how i found it <laughs> so it's it's pretty handy um i don't know if you want to entertain some of the questions i know we're going to touch on some other items as we roll through here um, i know some, there's some things you want to talk about as well um, and a couple of them i'm pretty excited about i want to demo um, as we talk about them uh, I was going to ask if uh, you the Zoom text or the Fusion issue that I had today was that uh, Caps Lock C, which does color contrast, no longer uh, functions. But um, with, with with my new Fusion, but I'm guessing that's kind of a new new thing that happened. And it is a good question, and I am <laughs> I've made a note, and I'm going to find out first thing in the morning because I had not seen any email to the effect that, that commands had changed. Um, so we, we stumped me, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll, we'll be together in, on, on the struggle bus. What um, I will do is send you an email though. As soon as I find out, I will get info to you so you can tell everybody you can disseminate that downstream. Perfect. Um, and one of the things you'll, I know you'll talk about it at the end here is I, I urge people to, to go to our training page, freedomscientific.com slash training. Uh, because you'll see a lot of this stuff um, as, as we have the, the YouTube video I showed. There's a link to a whole bunch of YouTube videos. And as, as you heard, um, they're not inaccessible videos. Uh, we work really hard to be sure that when these things are narrated, the commands are spoken, all of that information is there. So our videos are good whether you can see them or not. And they're, they're all a couple of minutes long, two, two and a half minutes, so they're bite-sized there's a bunch of other things. All of our webinars are um, are retained. Webinars on demand, they're called. Nice. And you can grab those. And there is a ton of topics there. Um, if you want to know about, <clears throat> excuse me, if you want to know about using JAWS with Word, with Excel, Outlook, uh, and, and they're constantly making new ones, you know, spinning new ones. So that's there for you as well. So that is a good question. And it is one I will find out tomorrow. <laughs> so email. have we have we reached to the end of your fusion part? We're, the, we're, the, we're at the end of fusion. Um, okay. 
I wanted to yeah, touch on a few other things. I said we take some through. questions. We're about halfway through the webinar and we'll yeah. take some now and then maybe some at the end. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So we've had two questions in the chat from Cassandra. Uh -huh. um, the first one is are there key commands uh, or are the key commands the same in both Fusion and JAWS? Currently a JAWS user. Uh -huh. That is a super command. So let me answer it this way and I will explain yes and no. When you're running Fusion, uh, Fusion is JAWS and Zoom Text running together. And so it is, it is as if they've agreed that JAWS will handle all of the speech and Braille output and Fusion will be Zoom Text and handle all, you know, the Zoom Text piece will handle all of the magnification in Fusion. So you've actually got both command sets. When you want to control speech, all the JAWS commands are there and they're waiting for you. And when you want to work on magnification, you want to set, you know, say you want to invert colors, you want to do mouse enhancements, um, you want to invoke any of these things, they're all available in their Zoom text commands. So they actually are literally side by side. Um, they run concurrently and both command sets are available. Uh, normally what is done, what's, what's on my computer here, in fact, is uh, when you're running Zoom text and when you're running Fusion, the caps lock key becomes the Zoom text key. You know, so if I want to do, uh, uh, you know, uh, caps lock C to do color, uh, any of those things, um, the caps lock key does its job. And then the insert key, which is on my keyboard, it's the six pack um, on my laptop. I actually really have a dedicated insert key, so it's nice. Um, the It's the JAWS key, it's the insert. So caps lock is zoom text, insert is JAWS, and both command sets are right there waiting for you. All right. And then the second question that Cassandra had is, mm -hmm. how do you tell if one's Braille display can show the time in the status cells? Oh, good question. So when you read about your Braille display and it working with JAWS, usually the manufacturer indicates whether status cells are supported or not. Um, if you can't find it there, if you, if you launch JAWS, uh, unless you turn status cells off, you will see them. It's either, it's usually three, four, or five, depending on the Braille display and its driver. Three, four, or five of the leftmost cells um, contain information that is not text content. It's not what's on screen. So, for example, uh, mine right now shows 3812. It's stepping through the minutes, and then I see my notes. Uh, so you'll see it because if, if the uh, Braille display driver for your display uh, supports it, they show up at the left end of your display. Okay. Unless you actually physically go in and turn them off in setting center. All right. And then another question in the chat from Pamela. Mm -hmm. uh, question. Someone told me that there is a JAWS command that will work with mouse over. My sighted peers say just hover over a link and options will drop down. Do you know the JAWS key command? Not the top of my head, no, mm. but let's look at command search together. Okay. I'm going to turn, I said, I'm going to turn speech back on. You ready? <laughs> let's see if the, since it's being so uh, full speech, <laughs> there it is. There it is. So we press insert space, cast space, Oops. main read. Sorry. Let's try this again. Insert main region, space. compliment, it's sharky, and zooming. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> All I'll that. take you down. Insert space, space. That's because Fusion's actually running and it fired my Fusion keystroke. I did caps lock. That's why you heard it say caps lock. So insert space and then the letter J. Search for JAWS commands dialog. Search for, search for, edit. Forms mode. Now we're in an edit field. This is cool. You can look up commands this way. If you haven't played with this before, it's worth knowing. So we're looking for on mouse over. I'm just going to enter mouse and see if it'll do it for me. Define a temp place marker. O Turn up rail case. Right mouse button. Okay, now I'm going to tab once. Mouse. Right mouse button. No. And we're, we're out of the edit field, but all of these are header delineated, so I can press H. Left mouse button. Rail control left mouse click. Rooting core left mouse button lock. Jo mouse right when JAWS cursor is active. Mouse left when JAWS cursor is active. Alt plus shift. And all I'm doing is pressing heading H. Mouse up when JAWS cursor is active. Alt plus shift plus up arrow heading level three link. You notice you're getting the command and it says link. If I pressed enter here, it would actually invoke that command. Say mouse pointer shape control plus draws keep move mouse down when draws mouse movement increment. Wrapping to top, right mouse. Ooh, I don't have mouse over in the search. 
if I'm on a web page, I will, I will, I will kind of go out on a little bit of a limb here. Um, I believe all I have to do is press enter on a mouse over and it'll say OMO on mouse over on your display if you're seeing it. And JAWS, of course, says mouse over. So enter, I believe, does Pressing it. this keystroke is the same as clicking the right mouse button. Thank press you. twice. Let's press escape to get out of that, shall we? Um, though it is quite helpful. Escape. Desktop. Fold. And it puts me back. In this case, I went to the desktop because I turned my Internet Explorer off. Um, and I'm going to launch H, Chrome. Enter. Because Start we're going to be search. using Chrome again in a Search moment. region. Okay. Thank you. We're going to use Chrome again in a moment, I believe, for some questions and answer time. So, again, insert space followed by J. That gives you that search field, and you can type in the command. And except for on mouse over, you should be able to find what you're looking for. But I do believe it is, is enter on that. If I am wrong, try space on a mouse over because it will be one of those two, and it will activate it. It should activate it for you. Um, the caveat is always on, on web page design and whether they've... Yes classed those controls right i have you know it's funny having this conversation because i remember i don't remember the page anymore but i remember sitting and going enter 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 and space 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 on mouse over and it didn't activate it which i found rather frustrating and there were some other things on the page that didn't work right either so you know your mileage may vary depending on who's put the page together some are coded well and some aren't do we have other questions elena anybody raise their hand I saw a hand raised, but it's gone now. Okay. Um, and then Myra posted in the chat, mm -hmm. um, new to Fusion and JAWS, where do I begin? Have never used either. Okay. I would send you again to the training, freedomscientific.com slash training. Uh, there are getting started videos. There's great tutorials in there. Okay. Um, you will find a lot of really useful information starting at the beginning level and taking you through it in really easy increments. And of course there's online training for zoom text. Okay. And so you can, you can go from there and just see what's in the online help system, both for jaws and for zoom text. And uh, there's fusion specific, fusion specific information. Also, if you go to our webpage, you go down, you arrow down and there's some menus you can open and you will find support. Press enter on support to open that menu and arrow down to documentation and go in there and you'll find a section. Uh, you will drill down to it and um, I believe it's under magnification. And there's the Zoom text documentation is there. You can you can grab the uh, the user guide and everything right there and download it. And if this is Tim here, if you're um, if you're totally new to using a screen reader at all, you mm -hmm. might uh, look for some some resources in your area of somebody who can provide you um, specialized you know assistive technology or computer training like maybe through your um, vocational rehabilitation agency in your state um, a, a, a lot of places have kind of community-based we have one here in in spokane that's called lilac services for the blind uh, there's an independent living program that that that's offered in many many states so I would I would ask some family members or even do some Googling yourself to see if you can find some resources for um, just some individual instruction too, which really, really helps. I can connect as a, a national, there's usually one in every state, I believe. Yep. If you're blind and hard of hearing, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, that's true. I can connect. It it that's really expanded over the years. So for 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 folks who are deaf blind and using oh, yeah. access tech. It's a neat awesome. resource. Yep. Okay. So, oh, go ahead. Do we have time for one more question? I have yeah. time for whatever you want. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have a hand raised from Junior, and Junior, you are unmuted if you'd like to ask your question. And Junior, hey guys. Hey, hey what's hey. up, Junior? Hey, how you doing? Uh, I just got a quick question for Fusion and Jaws. Um, mm -hmm. Are there any situations where you prefer magnifier or narrator? Um, I've ran into certain situations where my credit card wasn't reader, I mean, wasn't working uh, when I work at the base supply center. And as soon as I switched to magnifier, uh, credit card transactions would go through. And I was just wondering, is it have something to do with the bandwidth or is it wow. because, uh, you know, magnifiers with windows or whatever, whatever. Thank you. Oh, interesting. 
I'm going to de- I'm going to defer that to Everett and Tim. I have not had that situation happen to me. Um, I'm not using you know any point of sale or anything like that. So have you guys seen anything like that? I've seen certain parts in our HR um, payment system that will work better with other screen readers. Okay. Um, we also use a, a licensing system at the lighthouse that can get a little shaky when the techies are under the hood. And so oh. the net, if the network in Seattle goes down, then, um, I do teach. That's one of the first things I teach is that control windows enter. So mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. I mean, and I think you'd say this too, is use whatever works for the, oh, yeah. the for the you system. Whatever tool works for you. I mean, I obviously. I, I would like you to use freedom products that, <laughs> that goes without saying, but you're free to say that is, I, <laughs> that I did, but, but reality is you use what you've got. And if, if jaws fall short, zoom text fall short, you, you go to magnifier, you go to those others. What I would ask is if you, and you guys, now you've mentioned a couple of scenarios where things get kind of squirrely, let us know about that stuff so we can fix it. Mm. You know, we want to hear about the bugs. We want to hear about the problems. The only thing I add to that is when you tell us, hey, this is not working right, give us steps to reproduce it. A so solution. That we can go in and find it. Yes, yeah, so we can make mm-hmm. a solution. And can you give us the number um, for those who are not internet inclined, the actual phone number? If you just call our toll free 800 444 4442. I was, <laughs> it's sad, but I never call that number. I was like, oh, two, or is it three? 4442. Um, we'll, we'll get you to our main number. And that number is also on the website. You go down through support there, there's tech support info. Um, you can call and when you get there, you get, when you call the number, you get the ever popular, um, you know, phone tree list of, you know, option one, option two, often option 97. And there's just no easy way around that when you've got, you know, the volume of calls coming in. I, I like talking to a person right off the bat and being transferred and, Hmm. I confess we, you know, we, we have that same uh, phone menu that everybody seems to have, uh, but give that a call. Or if you want to do this online, remember arrow down to support, press enter, you'll see tech support. And there's a way to uh, submit a support online, not a report online. You can do that. Um, the email address is given. There's also a, a link to the tech support form if you want to do that. So there's some neat avenues. The nice thing about doing it online is you can sit down, compose your thoughts, maybe copy and paste those messages that have been generated by, you know, by the, the weird bug and drop that all into your email body so that it's all there. Um, steps to reproduce any of that stuff. But either way works. Elena, did we have a number of other questions? Uh, nope, that was it. No, that was it. All right. So we got about 12 minutes left on the webinar. So let's do, you know, a little more presenting here, and we'll leave about the last five minutes for questions or four minutes for questions. So, so can we look at uh, the smart glance feature? Are you up for that? Totally yeah, up for that. that I do want to. Awesome. I do want to say for the person on the phone, I see a two hundred six. If you, um, if you wish to t- to raise your hand, I believe it's star nine on your touch tone phone. Um, and if you mm-hmm. want to ask a question, uh, we're going to go ahead and present with have around present, but. Didn't want to leave you out. So exactly. Want to want to give them a minute, or shall we jump into this? Because this this to me is another exciting feature. Let's swim on in. Yes. Okay. See the and jaws, this, the shark. Okay. And this one bridges both because it is available on Fusion, and of course, with Jaws as well. Hmm. Um, this is Smart Glance, and Smart Glance, I am starting to use it a lot. And I'll show you two scenarios where I use it all the time. So when you open up a web page, you'll find that uh, web developers. They use text, okay, but um, they they do things with the text. They'll use fonts or they'll use background colors, different fonts, different background colors, different text attributes uh, to visually draw attention to text on a page that says, "Look at me." This you know make you know you heard the, the term this pops, this text pops, right? Um, so, for example, maybe I want and I'll, I'll show you in a moment, but I might want I might want to apply. Uh, special fonts and colors and stuff to a dashboard where I want to show the status of various options. Um, I want you to see, so for example, uh, I went to your guys' page first. And you've only got two spots that have it. I think the, the contact us and then the name of the page. Um, but Smart Glance, uh, JAWS tries to look at um, the text on a page and it 
it has a, a, an algorithm that ranks this stuff in reverse order, okay, based upon the infrequency of the color, the text attribute, font usage and size, that kind of stuff. So the, the more, how do I say this, um, the rarer this text attribute and color and everything combination is, the higher ranking JAWS gives it because it says, hey, they're trying to make this text stand out visually. This must be important. Something's going on for this reason. Um, let me show you kind of how this works. We're going to play with this for a minute. Uh, we're going to do it in two places. We're going to go to Amazon.com and do a quick search. Okay. And we're also going to go to Bookshare.org. Because and it's, it, actually that's my favorite spot, but I'll boo I'll, I'll boo that. I will do that last because it's not as full <laughs> as Amazon.com. Control L. Toolbar. Address and search bar. Edit. Htt. Amazon. Per Amazon. Period. Com. Here we Enter. go. Amazon.com. Spend less. Smile more. Google Chrome. Navigation region end. Personalized settings for this site. Pay. Yeah, yeah, blah, blah. If I spend more, I don't smile as much. So <laughs> you spend too much, right? So let's do a quick search. You know, spend less, smile more. You know. Search Amazon Edit. Enter. Search Amazon Edit. Ben. So we're just going to search for loafers. Uh, the shoe, not the person. D. Loafer. Okay. I, I am kind of a loafer, but that doesn't count. You won't find Ron Miller. In the, you shouldn't find Ron Miller in the list. So let's press enter on loafer. Loafer, enter. Amazon.com, loafer. Amazon.com, loafer. Wait for it. Page has nine regions, 244 headings, and 823 links. There are 17 smart glance highlights oh. on this page. This is a super busy page, right? And if you've done any searches um, on Amazon.com on your PC, you know that there are headings galore, there are links galore. You're trying to find the thing that you're searching for, in this case, loafers. And it used to be, I'll tell you what I used to do, because results isn't a heading necessarily. Uh, there's always images of the product. So I start pressing G, right, for graphic, for an image. And it will tell you, you get two things. You get, it, it'll say what the image is of a product and then you press it again, and it'll say, I think, Amazon.com. So it's sort of alternating between an Amazon logo of some sort and the image of the thing that it's found for you. And there's sponsored ones and not sponsored ones and the best in ones. But what they've done is they've employed some text that if you're looking at this visually, if you're doing what I call screen at a glance, you're looking really fast, looking for your results. The results um, section is, is the, the font that says results is in different text. It pops. It stands out. Now, if you wish to move through the web page from smart glance item to smart glance item, you press Y. Just like, remember, H for headings? Mm -hmm. Shift H to go back the other way for headings. I press Y. I don't know why it's smart glance, just Y, because that's what it is. But let's press Y. Results. Look at that. The first thing I hit is results. I like that. So it pops me right there. Now, if I press it again. New arrivals. Results. Okay. So that's as far as that's going to take me. But then I can start pressing G. Franco Sardo Women's Carolyn Lug Soul Over with Castle Detail Link Graphic. I don't want that one. Amazon Prime <laughs> Graphic. There's the Amazon Prime Graphic, and then I press G again. Cushion Air Women's Romeo Slip on Loafer Plus Memory Foam. Let's double tap G. Emma Cushion Air Women's Pierce Slip on Loafer Plus Memory Foam. Wide width. Yada, yada. So you get the idea. But you notice I didn't have to. Let's go back to the top here. Amazon. Search Amazon Edit. Loafer. So I've done my search for Loafer. Go button. By Aerial Down. Link Choose a Language for Shout. Link Hello. Account and Lists. Link Returns and Links Zero Item. Open Menu. But Link Click. There's all this stuff before I get to results, mm -hmm. right? I can press H for heading. 196 of over 10,000 results for loafers or top. That's not as helpful. But if I press Y. Results. Bam. One keystroke pops me to results because visually they want somebody to go, oh, there's my results and start reading down and buying products, right? I can fill my closet full of loafers mm -hmm. <laughs> or my living room full of loafers if they're sitting around drinking all of my soda and eating my snacks. So let's go to bookshare.org. Control L. Toolbar. Oops. Fat At don't, don't watch me type. It makes me nervous. So Bookshare, period. 
that was why that Ron used hey. to activate smart glance. Just we had a question in the chat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Why? And that will actually let you move through there. Let's make sure I did this right. Address and search bar at bookshare.org. Phew. Enter. If I talk and type, it's a bad Bookshare, thing. an accessible there online library for people with print disabilities. Google Chrome. I'm going to stop it. Let's search for a book. Okay. Search keywords, edit, title, backslash, author, or ISBN. I'm going to press enter to invoke forms mode. Enter. Search keywords, edit. And I, I, I don't have the ISBN for anything memorized. So let's do M-O-B-Y. Moby. Dick. Moby Dick, the whale story. Dick. Bookshare, an accessible online library for people with print disabilities. Search button. Press enter. Space. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Search results, Bookshare. Link advanced search. Okay. Let's press H. Search results, same page link. What format should I choose? Now that works. Refine search heading level. Discover other books heading. All I'm doing is pressing H. Wrapping to top. Search results, same oh, page link. I have to go down. It, normally, I normally use research it to do this instead of going to mm. the web page, but I didn't want to kind of get into the explanation of research it. Heading level, heading level one, all plus one. Heading level one, same page link. What format should I choose? Heading level main region. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Main region, search results, what format should I, what format should, list. With two items. List view link. Okay, let's do list view. Enter. Search results, book share. Col it resulted to grid view. Let's press H now. Search results, same page link, what format should, Moby Dick heading level two link. There we go. So Moby Dick, I found a book. I'm going to press enter on this link to open the page for the book. Enter. Moby Dick book share. Moby Dick or The Whale is a novel by American writer Herman. Now. If I press Y to go to the smart glance here, and this is especially true if you're using research it because it drops you onto the page. Let's press Y. Synopsis. Takes you right that's to the nice. synopsis. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. And you can arrow up to download. But I like if I'm going if I'm doing a book search, I look for synopsis. And I'll tell you the way I used to do this is as soon as the page would open, I'd press Control F to open the JAWS find and type in S Y O. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Totally. <laughs> Well, we have just a few minutes left here. Yeah. I really like that smart glance, but uh, just so everybody, mm -hmm. just to remind you guys that it all depends on how JAWS analyzes the website that you're on. So try right. it on different websites. Try it on different sites that you visit frequently. Maybe mm -hmm. your bank or or uh, your online learning platform uh, could could really, really come in handy. Uh, and again, that's just pressing the letter Y when you're on a web page using JAWS. Uh, are there any other questions? Anything in the chat? Has anyone raised their hand? This is your prime opportunity to ask Ron <laughs> Miller all kinds of questions in the next three minutes. Alt Y to raise your hand. Command Y on a Mac, star nine on your touch tone phone. Um, yeah. so in the chat, it looked like Pamela wanted just a little more clarification on, on how you activate smart glance. Okay. Um, literally when you go to a web page, all you have to do is press Y and it will let you step down through, uh, the smart glance items. It, 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 it does it for you automatically. It's uh, already she, activated. She yep. understands how you jump. I think what she's asking is what what brings smart glance in, in the, in the first place, what activates it. Oh. And that's just web page dependent, right? Yeah. It, if, if they don't have anything that's real distinguishing, uh, jaws won't identify any smart glance items. Um, if there, if there is, you know, text again, formatting color size, anything that would make that pop, if I could use that term, make it stand out visually, jaws is going to look at it and rank the importance of an item uh, based upon, uh, you know, how how special that text is. And if you press, you've opened up a page and it says 15 smart glance items, let's say. So you've got a bunch of them or even five or whatever. If you press insert plus control plus Y, insert control Y, it will actually generate a list of all of the smart glance items, just like you can do a list of links or a list of headings. So insert control Y to... To, uh, to generate a list of smart glance items. Handy. Awesome. All right. And it looks like we have a question from Junior. Okay. Junior, you are unmuted. 
Hey, Ron. Hey. Hey, just real quick. Uh, I prefer fusion over everything. So okay. you're saying um, if I'm having any issues with it, I can just call that 1-800-444-4442? Four, 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 Four three. I'm sorry. Four three. Four 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 three. Yes, you can. That's and you have a you have a link to get to tech or a a choice to get to tech support. Now, all they tech support isn't those guys are not software engineers. They'll help you as best they can. Um, But if there's an issue, what they will do if you've got you know you guys identify oh this is a problem you know they escalate that to engineering. They, they submit a bug report. They submit all the details that you have given them. And that is what's called escalated. It's okay. like it goes higher. Because in the middle of a class, Jaws was saying, hey, your internet is low. And the instructor just uh, recommended, hey, let's switch to magnifier because there's less bandwidth or some something like that yeah we use a, a network license of jaws unfortunately okay. so um, it has to authenticate to the network server in order for jaws to know that it has oh. an active license and that is a yeah that's a tough one if your internet's down it is i think it does it <laughs> it's inter- it refreshes in intervals i believe so it'll be quiet for a while then it'll yep. go to the server am i good and if the server doesn't go, yep, you've got a valid license, and it says, oh, you got a problem. I wonder what those intervals are, like five minutes? I don't know. Um, fire me a note because my forgettery is much better than my memory, and I can ask. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, if I remember. Hey, thank you, guys. Awesome webinar. Thank you. Hey, thanks, thanks, thank for you. Being here. thanks for coming, man. Yeah. Well, that about does it, everybody. We're a little after five. We'd like to honor everybody's time. Thank you so much for for joining us, Ron. It was so informative and a lot of the things that you talked about. And I took notes uh, and I hope everybody else did too. You'll Everybody who attended, you'll be uh, receiving an email, like a post-webinar attendee email with a bunch of different notes. There's also- I'll send a, you if you want so you can, you know, kind of build <laughs> I'd, I'd love that if, if, okay. you could, if you could do that yeah i would ask you not to share my documents because it's just my quick and dirty notes but nope make I'll, it I'll, pretty and... i'd like that that really okay. helped me also you guys there's a link in the email that you'll be receiving for a survey we would love to hear your feedback we actually incorporate feedback i promise so please consider taking that survey it would really help. And thanks again to Elena and Ron and Everett and, and all of our attendees this afternoon. It's been, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for letting me be here. It has been a lot of fun to be with you guys. Yeah. Thank all you. Right. All right, yes, Everett. Thank you. All right, Elena. Talk to everybody later. Thanks so much. All right. Bye-bye. Take care.